Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at creating a terrain in Houdini. We're going to be exporting that terrain out to Blender as a image file that Blender can import and read as a displacement map. We're then going to be also be exporting uh, splat maps from Houdini into Blender, which control texture variation and placement. And then we're going to be lighting and rendering the scene in Blender Cycles. And we're also going to take a look at how you can do that in Eevee. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so first of all, we're going to start off with an empty Houdini file. So just hit File, New, or just open up New Instance of Houdini. So this isn't exactly a tutorial of how to use Houdini itself. Uh, I can link in the description to some videos from side effects uh, for learning Houdini. But this tutorial we'll be doing is going over how you can create a very simple, uh, easy terrain and export that out into any engine of your choice. So the first thing to do is to start off with creating a height field. So you can right click in your network view. And you can type out the entire word height field. But what I like to do is just say HF. Uh, Houdini's case sensitive so you can find, you know, height field right there. Place that down. Uh, you notice the views just covered with the height field. So if you press F, that focuses the view. And you have a height field. Uh, so in the height field, we can actually open that up and it'll create a height field property. Now that's the exact same as if you were to just create a empty geometry here and say HF, throw down a height field. It's the same process, but you know, gets the job done. So we're not going to worry about any of these settings. Uh, size, that's an important feature. So it's the size in meters. So a thousand by a thousand, one kilometer. We'll leave it at that. So the main way to control Houdini's height fields is with noises. I'm going to do an HF noise. Place down the HF noise. Now take a view. And as you can see, all right, we've got a nice noise going on here. So when you're wanting to create noises, a good rule of thumb that I found is the amplitude. Well, let's just take a good look right here. So the amplitude, as you're increasing or decreasing the amplitude, that's basically the strength of the height. So the default's 500. The element size, that is how small or how large the details are. So let's say about 400 and let's go maybe about 550, something like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll go a little bit more, 440. Okay. So I'm trying to go for a little bit of a mountain scene here. All right, so another thing to know about the high field noise is there's multiple noise types you can play around with. So you've got like a sine, a 3D sine wave. You've got a Perlin noise. That's like a standard a simple noise you might see in other uh, programs for creating basic terrains. Uh, periodic Perlin, you get the picture, but we're using the sparse convolution, which I think is the best noise right out of the gate. You can combine and blend noises together, uh, but that's not something that we're going to be doing in this video at least. So the next step for us to do is add in a, a road, which is the most important node that I would say for creating a believable terrain. So it might take a little bit of time to process. It depends usually on your CPU speed. Uh, the program's very CPU independent. Um, take a look here and you're gonna see it's gonna change the display. It's gonna create a shop material uh, and it's not gonna look very nice. So if you come over to visualization and compute the range, you have the range here. So this goes basically from zero to one or negative 69 to 92 point whatever it decides that the range is. Uh, you can delete these, you can move these around. It's really up to you. I don't tend to use these very much. They're just for visual visualization purposes. Uh, so there's a lot of settings here. There's actually uh, like an hour, two hour long video that uh, side effects went into on one of their SIGGRAPH talks, I believe, about all the features and it's very in depth. Of course, I'm not gonna go on all the features here. I just like to use the, the 
default features at the moment. So we're gonna click freeze at frame, which freezes at frame 20. I think that's good enough. It's not too much simulation time. So hit that and you'll see down here, just cooking the terrain and going to frame 20. Give that a few seconds. Okay, so our bake has completed. It didn't take too long. Of course, it depends on the performance of your CPU. Uh, so you can see down here in the timeline or animation timeline, whatever you want to call it, that you've got these blue frames up to frame 20. Uh, if you don't see it, if your view is something like this, uh, click this arrow here and that'll show up. I have a custom view, but if you use the uh, default build view, uh, then you've got it right there. Basically what I have for my custom view is I just have this as one thing and then if you press P you can have the properties. So I find this is a lot more useful than having uh, the properties as one window and then this at the bottom. But that's personal preference. So if you actually scroll through this you won't see any difference because you're frozen at frame 20. But the nice thing about freezing at frame 20 is you're not caching all these frames that you don't need. So you uncheck this, that's frame one. So as you could tell, the erode node erodes over time. And if you just go through, you can see uh, quite a bit of erosion. Now I like that. I think that that gives some character. If you compare the two, it looks a lot more realistic. Uh, if you keep running the simulation, it'll keep computing in the background, but you don't necessarily want that. Uh, it's wasting some RAM. It's going to store all the frames in your system RAM. So we're going to freeze it at frame 20. Alrighty, so now we have our terrain, but we still have this material, and I don't personally like it. I think it's hard to visualize how the terrain actually looks. So we are going to delete that, and the easiest way to delete that is with a attribute delete. So we're going to throw that down here, take the view, and it's under the detail attributes. It's the material, the shop material path. So now you can take a nice look and you can see all of that detail that we got. Uh, so this is a before and after. Kind of messy, but it's, you know, it's a noise and then some realism here. So I would take this any day. This is starting to look like a mountain. Now, what I want to do is have a snowy mountain. So all this detail in here, all these little valley areas and rivers. What I could do is I could go into the road. I could go into the advanced riverbed, river bank. I could tweak all these uh, variables, but it's going to be slumping above that anyways with the snow. So I'm not going to bother about that. Just want this to be a quick tutorial. So then next, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a mask by feature so we can mask it where the slump is. So I'm going to start by inverting this because we do not want it at the tops, we want it at the bottoms. Delete this so that it's uh, basically a constant. And then we'll just play around with some values here to get where we want. I think that that's good. So now we're going to be using what's called a height field slump, which is basically what I call a snow modifier. So you can instantly see, kind of hard to tell if the red, but that is where snow is building up. You can decrease it a little bit or increase it, however that works. Uh, the more iterations you have, the more refined it is. So I'm going to decrease it a little bit. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do so that I can see this a little bit better is put down an HF mask clear. So you can probably guess what that does. It clears the mask. And now if we take a look, beautiful snow. The nice thing about this is you can have this node selected. You can be viewing the snow here and you could be playing around with this slump. So obviously you're going to want more than probably about 50. I think about 60 iterations is good. Spread rate, again, leave that at 1. And mask by feature. You can play around with this for how much snow you want. I want it pretty snowy, but not too much. 
So I think that's good. That kind of looks like we're at the top of a mountain here. And we got some peaks. Okay, so next up is, let's visualize that. Not that, HF visualize. So again, it's gonna look terrible because we have to compute the range. So we compute the range here and yeah, you can see you got yourself a nice mountain range. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to output that. So high field output allows you to output as an image file. So the best way I found is to use an EXR file. Uh, I leave it at packed raster, RGBA, 32 bit floating point. Uh, the resolution you can choose. You can flip it, flop it, I leave it alone. So let's do something nice, 4096 by 4096. And we are going to choose height for red, green, blue, and nothing for alpha. And we're gonna to need to remap this between zero and one. Otherwise the height will just, it will not work in Blender properly. And we do not want that. So now let's choose where to output this. We're gonna output this into the project. So I just save this as simple terrain creation Houdini. Uh, we're gonna create a new folder, texture folder. And we are gonna call this an EXR. So we're gonna call this simple terrain.exr accept and hit save to disk. Might take a few seconds, it's compositing. Okay, so I just went ahead and opened up the EXR file in Photoshop. Uh, so as you can see, it's been mapped correctly between zero and one. Uh, so the low values, those are the whites and the dark values, those are the uh, the peaks. So you can see this is fairly dark, basically almost black. And here this is almost 100% white. So that has been mapped correctly between zero and one. All right, in the next video, we're gonna be looking at importing this map correctly into Blender and setting it up so that it looks basically the exact same as the terrain in Houdini.